Hey, how's it going everyone? This is I Am Air, and I'm back with another tutorial on Unity, and in this video we'll be discussing how to get everything set up for moving platforms. This is going to be a one-stop shop solution video. I'm going to show you how we can utilize editor tools within Unity so that we can have the path move around complex shapes and be able to see the path and easily draw shapes within the Unity editor. I'll then go over a moving platform script that'll include three different popular moving platform types and how we can get the player to know when they're standing on a moving platform so that when they're standing on the platform it matches the platform speed and whenever they jump off the platform they stop matching the speed. The solution I came up with has been tested in both 2D and 3D environments. I've uploaded all the scripts for this solution to my GitHub page. There's a link to my GitHub page in the description, and I'd recommend visiting my GitHub page and copying those scripts and then putting them in your project, and then use this video as a guide on how you can make it work in your game. But if you'd rather type out the scripts as I explain them in this video, I'll make sure all the code is easily displayed as I'm explaining it, so you can also follow along that way. There's quite a bit to cover in this tutorial, so let's go ahead and get started now. Before I go over the scripts that I made for this video, let me set up the scene. The scene right now is very basic. It just has a main camera, a 2D player, a room made up of four different platform game objects, and then one last game object that acts as a moving platform. The camera has a very basic follow player script I made. The 2D character has different components I've discussed in other videos, but none of the components on the player are needed for this solution to work. So as long as you have some sort of jumping and movement solution on your player, you can easily transfer this solution into your project. There's two different scripts that I made that'll handle all the logic for this solution. The first script is going to handle the editor tools, so you can visualize the moving platform paths and have easier control in making complex shapes in the editor. The second script is going to handle moving the platform across these paths and controlling the position of the moving platform. If you're planning on following along, you need to make two new scripts in your project. So find a good folder in your project window that you want to go ahead and create these two new scripts in and go ahead and name your first script Movable Platform. Once you've created that script, go ahead and create another script and name it Movable Platform Path Editor. Go ahead and open up both of these scripts. And I'll actually discuss the movable platform path editor script first. So let's go ahead and focus on that one. Real quick before I go over how this script is going to work, let me explain what this script is going to do. This script will access tools within the Unity Editor to visualize points on a path that a movable platform should follow, label those points within the Unity Editor, and then draw a dotted line between each point for better visual representation. In order to access Editor tools, this will require a new using statement up top, so add Using Unity Editor to the list of using statements, then have this script inherit from Editor rather than Mono Behavior. It's also going to require this line of code above the class name, where it says public class movable platform path editor, go ahead and start typing out the following in square brackets, custom editor and then within parentheses type of, and then inside another set of parentheses go ahead and type out movable platform or whatever you named your movable platform script as, then outside of the set of parentheses where we have the script name, type out comma true, and then you should have one closing parentheses and one closing square brackets after that. This line of code will make sure the editor tools are available to whatever class is in the second set of parentheses. Moving along, let's go ahead and take a look at this protected virtual void on scene GUI method. All the logic for this script is going to be found inside this method. This method basically acts as an editor tools update method, and if there's any changes to whatever class is being targeted by this script, it'll go ahead and use the logic that we type out within this method to calculate and perform those changes. The first thing we want to do in this method is create a local int variable named next, and this next variable is going to act as an iteration holder based on the number of points found in the movable platform script. Next, we go ahead and set up a local color variable, which will give each of the editor tools that this script creates a similar color for better visualization. Now, of course, if you want to have different colors for each of the different tools this script will create, you can set up more than one color, but to keep things simple, I'm going to have all the different tools that this script creates a magenta color. Now, because this script doesn't inherit from mono behavior, we need to create an object variable type so this script can use the tools on the appropriate game objects within the scene window. And what this line of code is doing is making sure that if a game object has a movable platform script attached to it, it adds all the different tools that we're about to create to that game object. And then we give those game objects a variable name of platform. Next, we're going to go ahead and run a for loop. 
This for loop is going to iterate through the different number of points found on the movable platform script, so we can add the editor tools to each different point on the number of points list. Now I understand right now this is going to give you an error if you don't already have a list of number of points set up on your movable platform script. So before we continue, let's go ahead and jump over to the movable platform script. Let's create a public list of vector3 values and let's name it number of points. Let's go back to the movable platform path editor and let's go ahead and finish up this script within this for loop. Once we have iterations of all the different vector3 values for number of points, we'll want to create a temporary vector3 variable named position. This vector3 position value will share the same value as whatever iteration it is in the number of points list. And we're going to use this position variable to draw a sphere wherever that point is in the editor, as well as label that point based on whatever the iteration value is. We're then going to use the current position and the next position to draw a dotted line between those two points. So let me explain in the code how this is all going to work. After we set up the position value for that iteration in the number of points list, we'll then go ahead and set up the next value as that iteration value plus one. And then of course, if the iteration value plus one equals the same number of points, which in a list or an array means that the iteration value exceeds the number of values within that list or array, because both lists and arrays start with the value of zero, not one, then we want to go ahead and set this next value as zero itself. After we set up the vector three position for that point and we know what the next iteration value is then we set up a little sphere in the editor at the same position and rotation of that position variable we give this sphere a size of 0.5f and then also make sure that if we move this sphere around within the editor we set up the custom snap settings for this particular tool so that if you're holding control while you move this sphere around the editor it'll follow these custom snap setting values and this handles.sphere handle cap at the very end of this line will determine whatever tool the shape will look like within in the editor. There's of course a few different shapes you can choose if you don't want it to be a sphere, but I found the sphere works best in a 2D and 3D workspace so I chose that. This next line of code will draw a dotted line between the current path and the next path, and this 5 at the end of this line of code is going to determine how long each dotted line should be. So if you want each dotted line to be longer, you can go with the higher value, and if you want each dotted line to be shorter, go with the lower value. This next line of code is going to go ahead and label each point within the editor. So first it finds the iteration value of whatever point it is within the list, and then we add a string reference as a label. I labeled each point as point with the iteration value to string. You can have whatever string reference you want for your points, but it's definitely a good idea to include the iteration value within your label, so it's much easier to see within the editor what that point is within the number of points list. What this last if statement is doing is it's checking to see if there's no longer any changes within the editor so that it can record those changes within the inspector window. So basically, as you move each point around within the editor window, it also records those values in the inspector window and overrides those values there. So that's how the tools are going to be set up for the path editor. Let's go ahead and open up the movable platform script and take a look at the logic for that. Before I go over the logic and the variables in this script, I want to make sure I go over these two lines of code at the very top of the script that have the require component type of box collider and box collider 2D. Depending on whether or not you're making a 3D or 2D game, you're probably going to want the platform game object to have the correct collider type already. So this will just make sure that whatever game object acts as the platform and also contains this script that it automatically adds the correct box collider type. Depending on if your game is 3D or 2D, go ahead and select the correct collider type and comment out or delete whichever one you don't need. For this example, I'm displaying a 2D game, so I have the box collider 2D as the require component, and then I comment out the line of code that has the require component box collider, which isn't the most applicable collider type for a 2D game. Let's go ahead and first take a look at the variables now. We've already set up the public list of vector3 variables number of points, so let me quickly discuss all the other variables in this script. The next couple variables are going to set up a private enum for the different types of movement each platform should follow when it's moving between the points on the number of points list. And I saw for three very popular movement types and named them ascending, ping pong, and stop on end. The ascending movement type is going to move in a circular motion so that when it reaches the last point in the number of points list, it resets and starts over right at the very first point. The ping pong movement type will go ahead and turn back around at the very end of the points list, and then once it reaches the beginning point again, rather than going backwards on the number of points list, it'll iterate upwards and forwards again. 
The last movement type stop on end will have the platform simply stop when it reaches the final destination on the number of points list. Next we have a serialized field protected float variable named speed which will determine how fast the platform will be moving. The next two private bool variables needs to find next point and moving will help determine when the platform needs to move to the current iteration value or if it needs to change directions and move to the next value. The next private bool variable ping pong going down will work specifically with the ping pong movement type and help that movement type iterate downwards when it reaches the final destination of its path so that the iteration value for number of points will go down instead of up. The next two private int variables current point and next point will determine what vector 3 position and number of points the platform needs to move to so the platform can move to the appropriate point on the number of points list. Next I have two collider type variables both named Cole and one of them is commented out and these variables are either going to grab the reference of the box collider or box collider 2D depending on what type of game you're making so comment out or delete the collider type that you're not using. This last public bool variable place platform on first point will automatically set up the platform game object on the first point position when working in the editor and the game currently isn't playing. So when you have the platform within the editor window the transform.position value for that game object will match the first iteration value in the number of points list. This last public bool is optional, but it definitely helps the game design process to have the platform sitting at the first position rather than suddenly warp there when start runs. Let's go over the different methods in this script now. And first we have the start method, which will automatically set up the platform's position at the number of points initial value, so that even if you don't have the place platform on first point bool selected, it'll automatically transport that platform to the first point. The next two lines of code are going to grab the collider type for what you're using in your game, and you can either comment out or delete whatever line of code has the collider type that you're not using. In whichever line of code is applicable to your game, it's going to grab the reference of the collider on the platform. Next we run the fixed update method to handle the iteration value for the different platform movement types, as well as of course handle the platform movement itself. Let's take a look at this find the point method first, and I don't want to spend too much time explaining how this method works, because it'll run very similar logic for the three different movement types, and really all it's doing is setting up the current point and next point values to the correct iteration value on the number of points list based on how that movement type would be handled. We want to run a for loop that'll go ahead and start on the current point value rather than zero and then iterate upwards through the number of points list until it reaches the final value within that list. It'll then determine if the needs to find next point bool is true, which for the most part the needs to find next point bool will always be set to false. But for a split second whenever the platform reaches the current point and needs to calculate the position of the next point and set that as the current point, during those split seconds, the needs to find next point bool will actually be set to true. And then as you can see in this if statement, the first line of code will go ahead and reset the needs to find next point bool back to false. So all the logic in this method will basically handle a very complicated for loop and properly iterate through the number of points list to find whatever iteration value in that number of points list is going to be the best current point and the best next point. So I'm going to very quickly go from top to bottom in this for loop and discuss how and why I come up with each of the different current and next points. So this first if and else statement at the very top will either set current point to i, which i is the iteration value in the for loop, or if ping pong going down is true, then current point is i minus 2. So what we're doing in the beginning of this for loop is setting up current point to its correct value, and then depending on the movement type, we're going to go ahead and set up next point. So for the first movement type ascending, next point is either going to be i plus 1, but if next point is greater than the amount of points in the number of points list, which again would actually be the total number of points in that list because iterations always start at 0, then we want next point to equal 0. For the second movement type ping pong, there's going to be a little bit more math involved in getting the next point, and then depending on whether or not you're at the very first value or the last value of number of points, we'll set up the value of current point accordingly, and depending on the circumstance, set ping pong going down to true or false. I don't want to take up a lot of time in explaining how the iteration value for ping pong works, but just like ascending, once it's at the very beginning of the list, it'll go ahead and continue going up through the list. But once it reaches the very end value, rather than go ahead and repeat itself back to zero, it's going to go backwards through the list. And the next point is actually going to basically be the previous point in that list. Now for movement type stop on end, it's more or less going to run the same exact logic for movement type ascending. But once it gets to the last value of number of points list, rather than repeat back to zero, it'll go ahead and cancel out of this method and stop the platform there. 
but regardless of the movement type, the moving bool will be set to true as long as the platform knows where it's going next and what the current point is. Once the platform reaches the next point destination, it'll for a split second stop moving, and through the move to position method, it'll use the logic in the find next position method to make calculations on what the current and next points are. And then once it has the correct next point and current point, it'll toggle the moving bool back to true at the bottom of the find the point method, and then move the platform's position to whatever vector 3 value is the next point value within the number of points list, and it'll move to that position at the value of speed. Now the next four methods I have within this script are going to be on collision enter and on collision exit methods, and depending on whether or not you're making a 2D game or a 3D game, you can either delete or comment out the on collision enter or on collision exit methods that wouldn't apply to the type of game you're making. So of course if you were making a 3D game, you would choose the on collision enter and on collision exit methods, and then either delete or comment out the on collision enter 2D and on collision exit 2D methods. What the on collision enter methods are checking for is whether or not the object the platform is colliding with has the bottom point of whatever collider that game object is above the center point of the platform collider. This will make that game object a child of the platform so that it can match the platform's speed as it moves around. But as soon as the game object either steps off or jumps off the platform, which will of course run the on collision exit method, it'll no longer be a child of that platform and will no longer match the platform's speed. This very last on draw gizmos method is purely optional but definitely convenient for game design and what it's going to do is set the platform game object within the scene while the game isn't playing to the very first value on the number of points list. It definitely makes a lot of sense to include this method but regardless if you include this method or not, once you hit play the platform's position will automatically go to the first value in the number of points list so this just helps visualize where the platform is going to start out when a scene loads and it's probably something that you're going to want in your solution. With all the code discussed, let's head back into the Unity Editor, and let me show you how to set all this up. Setting all this up is actually very easy. Depending on whether or not you want your platform to be 2D or 3D, you're either going to have a sprite renderer component with the image for your platform, or a mesh render and mesh filter component with whatever 3D shape your platform is going to be. Right now, I'll test out with 2D. I'm going to show you a 3D test later. But for my 2D platform, I'm just using a standard 2D square as my image. I stretched out the X value to make it a little bit longer, and then shrunk the Y value to make it a little bit thinner. And if I just add the movable platform script to that game object, it'll automatically add the box collider 2d to that platform i just need to put in a value for number of points for the platform to follow and just to speed up this video i already made a path for the platform to follow in the shape of a star if you're not able to see the number of points or the path in the unity editor make sure you have the gizmos turned on at the top of the unity editor here we also want to make sure we have a value for speed and then if i select this box for place platform on first point you'll see that the platform automatically warps to the very center of point zero, which is of course going to be the first point in the path, and where the platform would start when the game runs anyways. So let me hit play and test it out. And as you can see, the platform starts moving, and once my player jumps on top of the platform, the player will go ahead and match whatever speed the platform is moving at. And as soon as I jump or leave the platform, then the player stops matching the speed of the platform and has regular movement. For the ascending movement type, once it reaches the final point, It'll go ahead and start over at the very beginning. And now while playtesting, let me go ahead and increase the speed of the platform so I can show you how the other movement types work. Next, I'll select ping pong movement type. And as you can see, once it reaches the final point on the number of points list, it starts cycling back down to the very beginning rather than repeat at point zero. And then for the stop on end movement type, once it gets to the last point on the number of points list, the platform just stops and won't move again until we reload the scene. I also have this very basic 3D scene I set up, and it's the same exact script I'm using on this 3D platform, but as you can see the Z value is also added to the direction which the platform can move at. The only difference in the script between what I just showed you and this one, and I'll just go ahead and quickly open it up here, is I commented out the line that says require component type of box collider 2D. The variable reference is the collider type and not the collider 2D type. And start, I grab the reference of the collider type and not the collider 2D type. And then finally, I comment out the on collision enter 2D and on collision exit 2D methods. So regardless of what type of game you're making or what scripts you're using to move and jump with, you can go ahead and use my movable platform and movable platform path editor scripts for any game that would require a movable platform and have some pretty robust Unity editor tools 
to help make complicated paths and have the platforms move from point to point in the most popular ways I've seen in most video games. All right, that'll go ahead and wrap up this video. If you found the information in this video useful, please leave a comment and like the video. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. And one last thing before I let you go, I do offer a course on Udemy that goes over this solution as well as all the other popular solutions that you would need for a Metroidvania style game or any 2D action platformer and offer a discount to the course on my website. Link to my website's in the description. It's a top rated course in Udemy and regardless of your programming skills for understanding of Unity, it'll give you a fast start in making a 2D action platformer. That's enough self-promotion for this video. I definitely appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Hope to see you in my next video and take care, y'all.